What's happening guys? Welcome in another Boxing Breakdown and Prediction show for this weekend's huge middleweight clash over in Japan between Gennady Triple G Golovkin as he looks to unify against former Japanese Olympic gold medalist and WBA regular champion Ryoto Murata over in the zone this weekend. So let's get into it now. You know, you guys have probably watched the show for a while know or feel about belts overall, so we won't get into that. But, you know, the poster the zone has, has up for this fight. You know, it's got the IBO belt listed. It's got the WBA regular belt listed and so on. You know, there's far too much fluff there for me personally. And, you know, frankly, I don't care all that much about the baubles and belts. So heading over to the transnational rankings, which is a site I always like to check out. You know, they have Triple G as the number one man in the division. Um, you know, no argument there from me. But, you know, they have Ryoto Murata. He's not even in the top 10 <laughs> at middleweight in this division. So we obviously know Transnationals uh, thinking about this and their opinion on his world champion status overall. But, you know, in my opinion, that is a little bit harsh. You know, Murata is a good fighter, uh, former Olympic gold medalist, as we said, you know, former world championship silver medalist as well. And he's held a version of a world title, you know, albeit a minor one since all the way back in 2017. So it has been a while. Uh, saying that, the bookies don't have an awful lot of confidence in Murata here either. Uh, he comes into this was the plus 400 underdog with Triple G coming back on the other side as a minus 600 favourite. Now, you know, the elephant in the room, the one thing most people have been talking about ahead of this fight is Golovkin's age. Uh, he turns 40 this Friday, uh, the day before the fight. But, you know, honestly, I think people are reading and maybe a little bit too much into it. It's almost like the illusion of just the number itself is putting people off back in Golovkin in this spot. You know, I saw people picking Triple G last year when this fight was first announced, you know, first meant to take place. Um, and often by stoppaging those predictions as well, you know, he's too strong for Murata. Murata won't be able to take that kind of power and so on. But, you know, it's kind of funny because now that, you know, we've added on another 12 months and suddenly that number's ticked up to 40, a lot of the same people are backing away from that prediction. So, you know, while turning 40 is an obvious issue uh, for him in this fight, it was an issue last year for him at 39. It was an issue the year before at 38. You know, Golovkin's certainly not getting the younger in there. But, you know, fighting a game Murata, who's 36 himself, plus a two-year layoff on top to boot, um, I really don't see it being all that much of a difference maker here in this fight, to be honest. You know, turning over to Murata, as decorated as, as an amateur as he is, you know, his pro record is fairly threadbare at this stage of his career. You know, he's got losses to San and Jekam, uh, losses to Rob Brandt as well. But in fairness to Murata, he avenged both of those losses in, in pretty brutal fashion. He stopped both guys in the rematches. But, you know, even more than that, I was in Japan for that first fight against the San and Jekam. And honestly, that was one of the worst decisions. And that's saying something in boxing um, that I've seen in a boxing ring in a long, long time. You know, Hassan was literally running around the outside of the ring for large portions of the fight, like literally running. And while Murata was a bit slower pressure on him, you know, and, and in terms of cutting off the ring, he was nonetheless doing the greater volume of work in there. He was connecting with the cleaner shots. And, you know, honestly, when the decision got announced, uh, I mean, everybody in the arena just went silent. They were like, you know, they must have made a mistake. They've announced the wrong winner. Um, you know, even Pedro Diaz, Hassan's trainer at the time, looks surprised. So, you know, Murata is better than advertised. He won that fight clearly in my eyes. Um, he's got a really high-level left hook, especially uh, down to the body. And that punch might well trouble Triple G in this fight at points. You know, we saw Triple G get tagged with that punch against Deverachenko a few times in their fight. And, you know, Murata's left hook is better than Deverachenko. So that's an avenue for Murata to explore here. You know, look to target that midsection of Golovkin's. But overall, you know, despite that, I can still see only one winner in this fight for me. We hear it said so many times in boxing, power's the last to go. And, you know, Triple G is without doubt one of the hardest hitting middleweights of all time. You know, not only that, but this kind of more, you know, much vaunted decline we keep hearing about in terms of Triple G. You know, yes, he's definitely slowed down. He's not the same fighter as he once was. But, you know, that win against Steve Rose looks an awful lot better now after the problems, you know, Rose gave Ed Edgar Berlang at the, you know, a couple of weeks ago in their fight. Um, plus, he absolutely destroyed Camille Cesar Meta as well in their fight. So, you know, is he the version of 2015, 2016 when he was absolutely starching bodies left and right and center? 
in the middleweight division? Probably not, but he is still absolutely elite for this division. And I just see him having too much Murata in this one. You know, Murata stands up way too straight for me. Um, in fights, you know, guys like Rob Brandt and Hassan and Jekam had limited success taking advantage of that. But against Triple G, you know, with his jab, with his angles, you know, with that kind of unorthodox punch selection he brings to the table, you know, I just see it overwhelming Murata here. You know, where Triple G has been troubled in spots in the past is when fighters get low on him. You know, get low, move in close to the body. You know, Deverachenko, as we said, had all types of success on Golovkin in their fight back in 2019. He got low, got on the inside against him. Deverachenko, a kind of shorter fighter as it is, you know, started teeing off on Golovkin's body. Um, Canelo, you know, another shorter fighter, also had a little bit of success with that tactic as well in their second fight. And, uh, you know, even Steve Rolls tried it for the opening few rounds as well. But Morata's just way too stiff in my eyes. You know, stands up way too straight. He has good coordination in his punches, especially those hooks, as we mentioned. But against a guy in Golovkin who brings such, you know, unorthodox angles into play, you know, punches coming in from every possible gap in your defense, up top at the top of the cranium to the side. You know, he's got a murderous uppercut as well. You know, tack that onto an A-plus jab as well. I just see Murata being broken down here and either losing badly on the cards or possibly getting stopped late. Honestly, if this was a couple of years ago, I'd have no hesitation in taking Golovkin by stoppage in this one. But this is where that 40 years of age thing starts to come into play a little bit. We saw after starting fast against Cesar Medder in his last fight, it's almost like Golovkin had to take a few of the early to mid rounds off in that one just to kind of grab a second wind in order to force the stoppage. So... I'm hesitantly going to take Murata to go the distance here. Um, Golovkin, by decision, is going off at a pretty big plus 250. Um, I like that. You know, if Murata can weather the early storm here, I think he has a very good chance of going the distance. As you know, Triple G has shown a tendency to slow down in the later rounds or, you know, of his most recent fights. So, you know, that's the way I'm going to look this weekend anyway. Take Triple G by decision at a pretty healthy plus 250. As your box and play for this weekend. That'll wrap things up for this episode. As always, leave us your thoughts in the comments section below. You can catch me over on Twitter at the Sports Wolf 83 and at my handicapper page, Kevin Dolan over at Wage Dog. As always, thanks for listening. Until next time, Slana will you.